I've been having a really hard time thinking about how to present the Audi Q5 Sport Pack that you're seeing over here. Because it is undoubtedly a great looking car, especially in sport bag form. And this Kronos grey that you see over here is not exactly a colour that you see very often. But at 492000 it's very expensive for a Q5. Let's think about the cars that you can get somewhere between that region. You can get the Lexus RX, the new Lexus RX. You could get the BM, uh, BMW X5, not to mention the X3. You can also get the Mercedes-Benz GLE. Again, not to mention the new GLC. Bunch of Volvos. You can get some really nice cars for that matter, for that price range, in fact. But that's not to say that the Q5 Sportback is not a good car. It's actually a really nice car. It just feels like that it should belong in that 300 plus uh, price, 300,000 plus price bracket. But let's explore and see what you're going to get if you do have 492,000 lying around and you're a die-hard Audi fan. Let's do this. Let's start with the exterior as always. No complaints, you get this gloss black huge grille over here. Uh, you don't get a lot of you know, cheap-ish looking plastics, matrix LED headlamps, typical signature Audi, 20-inch um, wheels, tires will be a little bit pricey, but hey, if you can spend 492,000 ringgit on a brand new Audi Q5, then what's a couple of thousand for some tires? Talking about tires, come wrapped with, uh, the 20-inch wheels come wrapped with Michelin tires. Surprisingly, can get a little bit noisy, but uh, sound insulation is quite good. And then, because it's a sport bag, so you get this sloping roof line, looks grand. And then, I really like the way the car looks from the back, but if there's one thing I could, I think could do with an improvement, is this black, very plastic-ish looking panel at the bottom that, that houses the rear sensors. I think it's a weird place to be placing sensors because if this knocks into anything, it's going to be a very expensive fix. But besides that, I think some gloss black would have been better if not body colored uh, panels would have been great as well. Uh, while we are back here, you of course get a powered boot. For 492000 you better get a powered boot. So, um, re retractable tonneau cover. This is of course very handy and you get a skinny spare tire. So in that sense, it comes pretty complete and you also get this scuff plate. So this is actually quite, uh, I find this quite handy, especially when you're carrying bigger stuff, going to KLI, to the airport and such with all your heavy luggage. So that always comes in handy. So besides that, from the exterior, it looks great. There's no doubt about it. I really like this, this color. In fact, it's very unusual color and the thing about unusual, unusual colors is that it's either a hit or a miss. This is definitely a hit. Power is provided by a 2-litre turbocharged engine making about 297 PS and 370 Newton meters of torque. All that power is channeled to all four wheels. Yes, this is an all-wheel drive car or in Audi lingo, it is a quattro all-wheel drive system and power is channeled via a 7-speed dual-clutch gearbox. Now this powertrain is actually a very nice blend of performance and efficiency. Speaking of uh, efficiency, fuel consumption is rated at 8 litres per 100 kilometres, so, which is quite honestly not that bad for a car that has all four wheels turning at the same time and with a 70 litre fuel tank you probably get a range of close or slightly above 700 kilometers depending on your driving style i like it i think it's a very nice blend i get you can comfortably cruise at about some very legal speeds and at the same time gives you very nice efficiency very good efficiency in fact when you're stuck in traffic and such blend this combine this with a very well appointed interior and you get a car that seemingly does everything quite well the latest generation q5 has obviously uh, grown in size back seats 
are really comfortable. I really like this diamond stitching on the Q5 Sport bag. Makes it look very expensive, very Bentley like. Uh, well, they are some from the same uh, Volkswagen group, but still very nice. Uh, seats are, are amazing, not only to look at, but also to sit on. And one thing that I really appreciate is the latch to put down the seats is not up here, but at the bottom over here, which makes it quite convenient for extra storage space. So that's great. Um, Isofix mounts, obviously a lot of cars come with them those days. Almost all cars come with them these days. And it's easy to get comfortable in here for someone of my height, no complaints, but you do not get any USB points at the back here, which is a bit of a bummer. But in terms of comfort, I think it's top notch, no complaints. From the driver's point of view, well, again, no complaints. Everything is just exactly where you expect it to be. Again, I'm totally in love with these S-line seats. They don't only look great, but they're actually very comfortable. Um, and offer just the right amount of support. They're a bit on the sporty side, so they do offer uh, a lot of uh, support. So that's great. I don't like uh, gloss black finishing. I've probably said it a thousand times. I mean, now this is the best, best way to demonstrate it because we've been having this car for a few days now. Check out the amount of um, dust and fingerprints are all around this gloss black finishing. You could be like my dad and you know, carry around two or three cloths, uh, pieces of cloth, uh, and just wipe down the interior every day, but that can be a chore, not so much if you're a retiree. Uh, you get one Type A USB slot over here, and one another Type C USB port over there, which is all the USB slots that you're gonna get in a car that costs 492,000 ringgit. Just one Type A and one Type C USB slot. Uh, entertainment via this, if I'm not mistaken, about a 10-inch screen. And one thing I have to I have to say though that I really like the Audi infotainment system. The Audi software is probably one of the best in the market right now. It's simple, it's straightforward, it's easy to use, especially when you're driving. I think uh, more cars should replicate or study the Audi software because. It's just so intuitive to use. Besides that, you also get a drive mode selector over here. You get five different driving modes. Efficiency, comfort, auto, dynamic, and individual. Individual lets you customize how you want the drive system to be like, the suspension to feel like, the steering wheel to feel like the suspension is of course adaptive the steering wheel you can you can adjust it to have it lighter or firmer depending on your driving preference around town or when parking a lighter steering wheel is obviously always uh, easier to park then besides that you also get the audi mmi um, system over here which the audi virtual cockpit uh, excuse me roughly about seven inches if i'm not mistaken uh, so this basically gives you it's one huge digital panel so you get all your all your displays all your essential displays as well as your maps now you you get three different views you get your classic view with you get your classic view with two uh, gauges flanking whatever you want to display over here you can actually change whatever you want to display over here and then you can go for the s performance view which is sportier and then at the same time you can also change change it to what you want to display and then you can have a more dynamic view that basically this is your rpm this is your speedometer sorry and this is your uh, RPM dial over there and you can basically just change what you want to display over here so this is basically your Audi virtual cockpit almost all Audis have this uh, just the if I'm not mistaken the Q2 only has the classic and the dynamic wells the more expensive Audis the higher up the range you go the more different uh, virtual cockpit views you get so besides that, there's no complaints about the interior. It's a very nice interior. Even the drive 
is really sorted, very compliant, quiet. NVH levels inside here are really nice. Um, I think it's a great place to just launch back after a long, long day at work or you know when you're simply commuting on the highway and such. I think it does a brilliant job at uh, absorbing uh, all over uneven roads, bad roads. It, the suspension is very well sorted. So there's no complaints whatsoever. The only issue with the Q5 is the price. Besides a very well uh, appointed interior, you also get a 16 speaker Bang & Olufsen audio system which is just amazing. The, sounds, the sound quality of that is just brilliant. So it's very hard to fault the Q5 Sportback. It not only looks great, it drives great. The interior is just brilliant. Um, of course, only two USB slots is a bit of a bummer. And the price, 492,000 ringgit is just, yeah, doesn't quite cut it. Why is it so expensive? Malaysian taxes. This is a CBU unit. If it was locally assembled, I expect it to be somewhere about the 300 plus region. And then yes, it will probably sell like hotcakes and it should, it deserves to be. It's a very nice car. There's no doubt about it. 492,000 though, it's just that there are a lot of options, perhaps better options out in the market than the Q5 Sportback. Undoubtedly a great car, just sadly too expensive. Thank you for watching, I'm Keshi Dillon, this is The Piston Show.